Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Something new I want to do for the channel, and it basically has to do with the what ifs of professional wrestling. What if this could happen? What if that could happen? And some of these stories I'll be doing in these next several videos will be stories I've heard that could have happened by the wrestlers themselves or just some fantasy book. And I would like to have seen when I was a kid. Stay tuned. Don't go away. And welcome back to the podcast. I'm Troy. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and that like button. I do appreciate it. So what I want to do, like I said at the beginning, was talk about some of these what ifs. Now, there'll be some what ifs. Uh, you know, I've heard wrestlers talk about that could have happened, uh, let's say, back in the 80s or 90s. And then there were some that's just kind of fantasy booking, like if I could have booked when I was a kid, I would like to have seen these matches. So that's the kind of type I want to do. Tonight, we're going to talk about Greg Valentine. Now, he has mentioned more than once that he almost became a fourth horseman. And this would have been around the time when Barry Windham was a horseman. He said that they were going to turn Windham face and bring him in to fill Barry Windham's spot. So that would have looked a whole lot differently. And so we're going to take a look at that and what 88 could look like differently if Greg Valentine was a horseman. Now, assuming that Greg Valentine would have came in to fill the spot of Barry Wyndham in 88, it would have had to have been definitely 80 because when the horsemen had Barry Wyndham in their fold. Now, what time frame, I don't know. Would it have been not long after he became a horseman? Would it have been later that year? And you got to remember, Tully and Arn left for the WWF uh, around September, I think it was. So I don't know when the time frame was for him to have been a horseman. But uh, maybe it was a reason because he did have, uh, you know, he did sit down and talk to um, J.J. Dillon, Dusty Rose, and Jim Crockett about it. So maybe they felt like that turn for Wyndham being a heel wasn't the best idea possibly. I don't know. I don't know the, all, the whole details behind it. But what I do know is that is the time frame. But let's take a look at what would have happened if Greg Valentine would have come in and became a horseman like early on, even before Barry Wyndham's heel turn. Okay, so assuming Valentine would have come in right before Barry's heel turn, you got to remember Lex Luger got kicked out or left, however you want to look at it, in uh, late 87. And then he and Barry Williams started teaming up, became the Twin Towers, and a big, you know had a big feud with Tully and Arm for the World Tag Title. So if Greg Valentine would have come in, let's say, around that time, then there would have never been a need for Barry Wyndham to have been a full horseman. They could have kept him as a face. And how much different would 88 look then? Just because of one person coming in and filling a slot and not having to turn another one heel. And don't get me wrong, Barry Wyndham as a horseman was a good fit. Barry Wyndham did a great job as a horseman. I was skeptic, you know, as a kid. You're like, I hate that, I hate that. But as I got older and looked back at it, believe you me, it was a good fit. Barry was a good horseman. But now if Greg Valentine was a horseman, how long would the feud with Barry Wyndham and Lex Luger versus Tully Nard went? I'm thinking they would have won the tag titles like they did at the Clash of the Champions and then probably dropped them at the Great American Bash. I also see Sting and Flair continuing their rivalry into the Great American Bash where Flair would have went over at the Great American Bash. Um, but I also would have felt like Dusty and Greg Valentine would have had a feud for the U.S. title. And I think they would have put the title back on, and I say back, because Greg Valentine was the U.S. champion back in the early 80s. I think they would have put the title on Greg Valentine. I really believe that the Horsemen could have had all those titles just like they did with Barry Wyndham. So how would that would have looked in the Great American Bash? Well, I think, I believe Tully and Arm would have won the World Tag Titles back. I believe Greg Valentine would have had defeated Dusty Rhodes at the Great American Bash to become the U.S. champion, and I believe that Ric Flair would have found some way to defeat his sting and kept the world title at the Great American Bash. Then that would have set up a whole different storyline going into Starcade. Starcade, I think, could have possibly been, let's say, Lex Luger and Greg Valentine for the U.S. title. 
Barry Wyndham and Ric Flair for the world title. And probably, even though it was a good move to move the Midnight Express as faces against Tully and Arn, um, I don't know that they would have done that or not, but if, let's say, they didn't, it had to have been the Road Warriors challenging for the world tag, tag titles the second t- year in a row because they had that championship shot in 87. I think they would have, quote-unquote, finished the story in 88. Um, I think Star K could have been, you know, like Sluger become the U.S. champion and having a heck of a few with Greg Valentine. I think Valentine could have really – elevated Lex Luger to a different level um, and just keeping him at the U.S. title pitcher. I think it had been time for Barry Wyndham to become the world champion at that point in time because back in 87, he had a huge feud with Ric Flair that was just absolutely – it was over. It was over big time. And I believe this is one of the most finished the story situations for Barry Wyndham. So that would have led into what other matches could have happened in 87. So I'm also thinking that in 88, the Midnight Express could have turned face anyway. And I think the original Midnight Express would have been coming in, so that had been a good rivalry like it was anyway. So even though the Midnight Express wouldn't have the world tag titles, they may have put the U.S. tag titles back on them or just let them keep it and then lose it to the original Midnight Express and then get it back, you know, in 89 sometime. But uh, even though Dennis Condor didn't stay long. And that was kind of a bummer, too. But I think when you got past the Greg Valentine Dusty Rhodes feud for the U.S. title, it would have been a good idea to probably put Dusty against Kevin Sullivan. I really believe those two could have draw, draw money just simply because they hated each other real badly or horribly. Or it was it have been a nasty feud. Anyway, so Dusty Rhodes and Kevin Sullivan would have been a nasty feud for sure. Now, what else would you have done? I think that's a lot of matches right there, right? You did have Ivan Koloff go face before he left, turn against Paul, or Paul Jones turned against him. Um, I think you could have probably had Nikita there like it was, and then had him against the Russian Assassins, which has probably been a pretty decent little feud. You could have finished up at Starcade and been over with. Um, Ricky Morton was there without Robert Gibson. I'm trying to think. <laughs> You know, Al Perez, Ron Garvin's heel turn. Uh, Ron Garvin probably wouldn't have turned heel. He may have been going against Al Perez. Um, I, I think the main big storylines out of all that would have been the Horseman versus Lex Luger, Barry Windham, um, and the Road Warriors. I'm trying to figure, Sting, you probably would have went ahead and put him against Mike Rotunda even before 89 and let that happen between those two and then found something else for Rick Steiner to do. I don't know what else you could have had Rick Steiner do. Maybe Eddie Gilbert was coming back, team with Eddie Gilbert, and have a feud with somebody. I don't know who. Uh, the Fantastics were there. You might have had Steiner and Eddie Gilbert as a heel against the Fantastics. That could have been okay as well. But the the main, like I said, the main ingredients to this whole thing would have been the Horseman versus Lex Luger and Barry Windham with whoever they might have had with them. I think a good clash of the champions would have been uh, just before Starcade. You could have had a elimination tag match with the Horsemen, Greg Valentine, Rick Flair, Tully and Arn, uh, versus uh, uh, Lex Luger, Barry Wyndham, and the Road Warriors, and then been like a Survivor Series type main event. I think that would have worked out good. I think all in all, uh, if Greg Valentine had to come in to the fold in '88. It would have changed the entire roster to change the whole entire storyline. And it probably would have been for the better. I really believe it could have been much better than having a Tower of Doom match at the Great American Bash. And I mean, honestly, that match sucked, really. Uh, Bash 88 could have been a lot better. And I think if it would have been Greg Valentine there, it would have been a ton better because you could have kept Barry Wyndham as a face and against Ric Flair for the world belt and Star K would have drew a good amount of money because by then people would definitely want to have seen Barry Wyndham become the champion and then basically what you do at Star K you put the titles on everybody you put Barry with the world title Lex with the U.S. Road Warriors world tag titles and then put the horseman on defense and let it ride but then you had to make sure that Tully Narn didn't go anywhere right I mean, like I said earlier Tully Narn left around 
uh, I think it was September or late August, early September. But anyway, if you could have done anything you could have to keep those guys there, that would have been huge. That would have been a good what if. Now, what happened with this whole when Greg Valentine was coming in? Again, I don't know. If you know, comment below. If you know what the time frame was, it could have been after Tully and Arn left. Maybe then they were going to change Barry back to a good guy and maybe feud with Flair at that point. I don't know. Or, or even feud with Greg Valentine, which have been a pretty good feud. I think Barry Wyndham and Greg Valentine could have been a heck of a battle for the U.S. title if that storyline would have been the case. But I think the other storyline I was talking about with Greg Valentine coming in earlier in the year could have made better and bigger money for the Crockett promotion. And the uh, Great American Bash would have been a better all-around sellout because you'd have had Sting and Ric Flair, and people would have thought Sting was going to beat Flair. Flair could have beat him, you know, uh, get the belt by his qualification or anything like that. JJ could have helped out and cost Sting the match. But it would could really set up a good main event at Star K with Barry and Rick. I think it should have been a good finish the story type situation, as I said earlier. But anyway, guys, I don't know. Comment below and let me know what you think. Um, like I said, I've heard Greg Valentine talk about this in a couple of different interviews. And each time he has stated it was Barry Wyndham he was going to take the place of. So if you know around the time of 88 he might have been coming in, comment and let me know because – I'm not really sure 100%. I, I've listened to the interviews, but I don't remember him ever saying anything about the time frame of it. But it had to been 88 because that's when Barry was a horseman. So either way, I think it would have been a good uh, situation for the NWA to have Greg Valentine. Um, he was a big draw back in the uh, early 80s with Roddy Piper, and I think he could have done it again. But we'll never know, right? It never, never happened, so we'll never know how good that would have been. Until next time, God bless. See you soon.